Well, today I'm talking about the top seven fats that heal your body. So I'm going to talk about fats that heal you and fats that kill you. We know fatty acids are so critical for overall health. They actually are, are involved in all the cell membranes of your body. So all of your cells on the outer layer have this uh, bilipid layer, right? So it's two layers of fat and all of your hormone receptors are built into that. So your insulin receptors, your estrogen receptors, your testosterone receptors, all built into these fatty acid layers. And so having the proper balance of structural fats and fluid fats is really, really key. And we also want to make sure that the fats we're consuming are not rancid and the types of fats that promote inflammation. And so when I talk about a healing diet, and this is kind of the, the, the best place to start when you look at your diet, number one, you want to reduce sugar and grains. That's the first thing you want to do is look at what's in your diet, get rid of as much sugar or added sugars as possible and grains, grains, you know, are going to be breads and oatmeal and rice and things like that. For some people, they do better on, you know, they're, they're able to tolerate a little bit more grains than others. For some people, they absolutely need to eliminate them. And when we're ever trying to reduce inflammation, it's usually one of the first places we start is eliminating grains. Second thing is get rid of bad fat and add in more good fat. And this could arguably be number one, right? We could actually start instead of focusing on the sugars, actually just getting rid of the bad fats, getting rid of processed vegetable oils and trans fats and adding in more of the good fats we're going to talk about here. Number three is changing the meat that we eat. So getting rid of as much uh, grain fed, conventionally raised animal products because they're so loaded with, uh, with, uh, organophosphate chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, all different types of toxins. And they're also loaded with bad fats, omega-3, or I'm sorry, omega-6 fats. Um, they are low in antioxidants, low in omega-3s, low in conjugated linoleic acid. So whenever we're looking at nutrition, we want to optimize the amount of nutrients going in our body. And we want to minimize the amount of toxins that we are consuming. And so changing the meat that we going with grass fed organic pasture raised is a great way to, to get more nutrients and less toxins into our diet. And we know that inflammation, particularly from bad fats and insulin resistance. So when we're consuming toxins, bad inflammatory fats, as well as sugars and carbohydrates, a lot of carbohydrates, high, high amounts of them, we are creating insulin resistance. And we are activating inflammatory amplifying pathways like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin six, which drive up C reactive protein and um, you know increase our risk of heart disease, stroke, heart attack, cancer, diabetes, right? All these types of conditions. And so, very very important that we address this from a nutrition perspective. And we know that trans fats may be the worst foods to consume. We find these in fried foods desserts, a lot of desserts, like homemade, like, um, you know, different, uh, baked goods, donuts, things like that. Brownie mixes that you'll find out there, pastas, salty snacks, like chips, uh, a lot of pretzels, you know, things like that. When you go down that chips aisle, you're finding a lot of trans fat based foods, a lot of breads, uh, like garlic bread and different things like that. They have got trans fats and margarine and stuff like that added to them. Uh, breakfast pastries. So again, you know, we're thinking about donuts, one of the most trans fat rich foods. And these are highly, highly inflammatory, really drive up inflammation in our body. But then we also want to look at vegetable oils, right? Things like safflower oil, peanut oil, sunflower, cottonseed oil, canola, corn oil, soybean oil. These are all classified as vegetable oils, or we could also call them seed oils because they're actually the oils from the seeds. You know, your traditional vegetables really don't have you know, they're extremely low fat, but the seed is actually where the majority of the fat is. And so that's kind of what they're pressing there uh, to get as much fat as possible. And we know that soybean oil is one of the most highly consumed fats in the world. It is really the, the most highly consumed fat in the world, followed by corn oil. And that's because these are, um, they, they are grown and, and really particularly, I would say these are, are you know, highly consumed in the United States more so than a lot of other countries, 
But that's because the government subsidizes the production of corn and soy, right? So the government actually pays farmers to grow this, but it takes a lot of corn and a lot of soy. They've got to really press these. It takes a thousand bushels of corn to produce one ounce of corn oil. I mean, it's hard to eat the amount of corn oil that you would get in um, you know, a salad dressing that's using corn oil, right? It's like impossible to, con to consume that because corn itself is a low fat food, but they're getting this oil, which is mostly highly uh, fragile omega-6 fatty acids that, are, that easily go rancid, right? They easily oxidize. When we consume these, they create a lot of oxidation, right? They really drive up oxidation, which is like an internal rusting process, um, so they create more oxidative stress, drive up inflammatory pathways in the body. So we want to get rid of our consumption of these. So again, staying away from canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, safflower oil, grapeseed oil, margarine, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, right? We want to reduce or really eliminate our consumption of those and really focusing on butter, particularly grass-fed butter, tallow, beef grass-fed beef tallow, ghee. It's very good. Coconut milk, coconut oil, avocados, right? Consuming avocados, or avocado oil, olives, or extra virgin olive oil, fish oil, eggs, all really, really good stuff. Saturated fat, you know, I, I mentioned butter, I mentioned tallow, I mentioned coconut oil. A lot of you guys are thinking, but aren't those loaded with saturated fat? Well, saturated fat is actually one of the most important nutrients you can consume. In the beginning, I mentioned structural fats and fluid fats. And our cell membranes really need these structural fats, saturated fat, uh, cholesterol, which you know is um, is a lipid, right? It's considered lipid, uh, but it's a combination of fatty acids and, and other other compounds uh, that help produce that. But they they all provide structure in the cell, right? So they all create more rigidity and structure. So we don't want too much of that in our cells and our cell membranes. We want fluid fats like omega threes in there and omega sixes, but we need a really good amount, like at least 50% of our cell membranes are these structural saturated fats. And that helps them function properly. When we don't have enough of these, they become very permeable and easy for viruses to enter, right? So it actually provides kind of an immune and cell membrane protective component so that these cells are not easily infected, right? So saturated fats are key. Our heart also prefers saturated long chain 16 carbon palmitic and 18 carbon stearic acid for energy. Those preferred energy sources, these long chain saturated fats for the heart. Our bones need saturated fats to assimilate calcium effectively. They help protect the liver from adverse effects of alcohol and medications like acetaminophen. They help the lungs with a compound called surfactant, surf uh, which protects the lungs epithelium and defends against breathing disorders like asthma and that the surfacant is, is composed primarily of the 16 carbon palmitic acid. They also play a key role in testosterone, estrogen, right? All of our major sex hormones play an important role with the immune system. Um, so they actually help prime our white blood cells to destroy invading bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and they fight cancer development. The medium chain fats, so when it comes to saturated fats that really, really are good for the immune system, we got to look at the medium chain lauric acid, which is medium chain, but it's actually uh, acts more like a, a long chain fatty acid. Mo coconut oil is the highest form of lauric acid, along with mother's milk and uh, mystic acid, which is a 14 carbon chain fat that are found. It's found in butter, coconut oil, and meat. And they work to kill bacteria, yeast, and yeast in the gut, right? Very anti candida. There's also capric acid and caprylic acid which are also medium chain fats that turn quickly into ketones. And they're also very antibacterial, anti um, yeast, right? So they help kill, kill off pathogenic yeast um, and very, very good for the immune system. Saturated fats are very good for signaling satiety. So they help us to eat less, lose fat and maintain a normal weight. So they help with fat burning. And uh, you know, in general, they just help with overall cell membrane function. And so why, so eggs, of course, are, are high in saturated fats, and they're also very high in vitamin K2, as well as vitamin D and vitamin A, right? So all of our fat soluble nutrients, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K2, which are very important for, uh, for cardiovascular health, for healthy 
um, endothelial linings of our blood vessels. Vitamin A is also really important for vision, right? And it particularly has the most bioactive form of vitamin A, retinol, which is really important for the retina, right? Our retina, so we can see properly. So it's one of the best forms for that. Eggs are also very rich in choline. We know we need choline for good bile flow. We need choline for brain function. Phosphatidylcholine is, uh, you know, really critical for all the cell membranes. And eggs are our most dense form of choline, right? So in two eggs, I believe we get something like 300 milligrams of choline. And we really want everybody to get 500 milligrams or above all adults of choline daily. So eggs are the best source of choline. A lot of people are choline deficient. So eggs are fantastic for this. Also rich in omega-3s. If you get the pasture raised eggs, they're rich in omega-3s, they're rich in conjugated linoleic acid, which helps improve immune health and metabolic health. And also very rich in minerals like zinc and selenium, which are critical for immune function and hormonal health. So eggs, pasture raised eggs are one of the most nutrient dense foods you can eat. Now, of course, there are people that have immune sensitivities to eggs. And if that's you, I don't recommend consuming eggs. If you eat eggs and it drives up inflammation in your body, then avoid eggs, right? Avoid them. Or at least what you could try is separating the yolk and the white. A lot of times people have a sensitivity more to the white and they can consume the yolk. And the yolk is where most of these nutrients are. The white is primarily, it's primarily just protein. The yolk, you've got all these fat soluble nutrients, right? Because that's kind of you know, where the developing chick is, right? That's where all the good stuff is. And so, whereas the white is more of like the amniotic fluid, so it's protein, but there's not a whole lot of nutrients in there. So for some people, they are sensitive to the egg albumin, which is in the white and they can handle the yolk, but you know, so you could try separating it, but if you're, if you're feeling more inflamed and you feel worse when you're eating eggs, then avoid eggs. Other than that, if you feel fine eating eggs, consume them regularly because they are such a healing nutrient dense food. Coconut oil. Coconut oil, of course, is also a great source of the saturated fats, uh, primarily medium chain fats like lauric acid, capric and caprylic acid. Great for the brain. Uh, some of the fats in there turn into ketones, which ketones are a derivative of fat metabolism. And they are water soluble molecules that the liver produces from our own body fat and from fatty acids we're consuming in our diet. And these ketones get up into the brain and they turn off inflammation. They, they actually help stimulate our mitochondria to divide and grow and to become more energy efficient. Most people are ketone deficient. Our ancestors used to have ketones regularly, primarily from food restriction, right? They didn't always have access to food. They didn't have pantries and refrigerators. So they would have more times of famine. It wasn't uncommon for them to go you know, 24 hours without eating or maybe multiple days without eating. And so they would get their body fat. They would turn their own body fat into ketones. And those ketones would have this um, effect of signaling healing and repair, mitochondrial division. We call it mitochondrial biogenesis, shut down inflammation in the brain. Most people today are really going through their lives, not producing any ketones because they've got their insulin levels elevated and insulin as long as insulin is elevated, it shuts down ketone production. So there are certain fats we can use and really just eating a low car, lower carbohydrate diet, focusing on healthy fats, and then practicing time-restricted feeding and intermittent fasting will turn on the ketone production. And that's key. You know, we don't need ketones up all the time. However, having them elevated from time to time is extremely beneficial for our body. So coconut oil is one of the types of things or coconut fats that will help boost up ketones, right? So there can be a lot of benefits there. Particularly, you can see 50% of coconut oil is lauric acid, which doesn't turn into ketones very quickly, but it's very good for our immune system. The other 15% of uh, coconut oil, so coconut oil is 65% uh, medium chain fats, right? And then it also has long chain saturated fats, and it has some monounsaturated fats, some very small amount of polyunsaturated fats, mostly saturated fats. 92% uh, of the fat is saturated in coconut oil. 65% is medium chain, but 50% of the 65 is lauric acid, right? So, um, you know, out of that 65%, I should say 50% is lauric acid. So 50% of the fat overall in coconut oil is lauric acid, which is a 12 carbon chain 
medium chain, classified as medium chain fat, but we actually do need bile to metabolize that, doesn't turn quickly into ketones. Whereas the caprylic acid and the capric acid, right? The eight and 10 carbon chain, uh, medium chain fats turn quickly into ketones, but they only make up 15% of the fats in coconut oil. So we can also concentrate them and get them in a concentrated form. And I'll talk about that. I like C8 caprylic acid as a concentrated form of fat that we can use. Now, grass-fed butter, also a great source of conjugated linoleic acid. Conjugated linoleic acid really turns on fat burning, also very good for the immune system, helps, prevent, helps protect against cancer, supports muscle growth. It's also a natural form of butyrate. Butyrate is a postbiotic that our gut bacteria produce. It's a very short chain fatty acid that our gut bacteria produce from fiber, right? But a lot of people, because they may have gut dysbiosis, are not able to do that. Some people don't tolerate fiber very well in general. So butter is a great natural source, right? Getting a direct source of this butyrate, which helps reduce whole body inflammation, helps heal the gut lining. So it can be really powerful there. It also contains that fat soluble vitamin A retinol. Now fat soluble vitamin A, the bioactive form retinol, we can't get from plant foods, right? So we get beta carotene, but we actually have to convert beta carotene. It's a precursor, but we have to convert it into a form of vitamin A that we can actually use a retinol form. And it's actually uh, more bioavailable to get direct retinol. We get this from grass-fed butter, from pasture-raised eggs, from organ meats, like particularly liver, grass-fed beef liver, something like that. We're going to get a lot of this retinol, right? So really powerful, um, uh, care, you know, really powerful antioxidant that's great for the brain, great for the eyes, great for the skin. Butter is also a rich source of vitamin D and vitamin K2, and they work together for calcium metabolism to help pull calcium out of the bloodstream and into the bones where it can be used. We don't want too much calcium building up in the bloodstream. When somebody develops osteoporosis or weakening in their bones, it's not typically due to, to poor, it's not typically because they're not consuming enough calcium. It's because they're not absorbing calcium well. Maybe they have low stomach acid levels and they may not be utilizing. They have poor calcium metabolism because they don't have enough vitamin D and vitamin K2 and magnesium, which help work with calcium to get it into the bones. So that's important. Grass-fed butter also does have calcium. It also has magnesium in it, selenium, right? A lot of different compounds that help. It also has lecithin, which uh, is a form of choline, which again is great for the brain, great for all the cell membranes. It's also rich in omega-3 fats if we get grass-fed, 100% grass-fed butter, rich in omega-3 fats as well, which are uh, very good for reducing inflammation in the body. Monounsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats have one double bond. So saturated fats have no double bonds. The more double bonds in a fatty acid, the more uh, susceptible it is to oxidation, right? The less stable it is. Okay. And the more fluid it is. So saturated fats, again, are structural. So they are uh, less prone to oxidation. They're very resilient to oxidation and they're hard, right? So that's why like butter is solid at room temperature, for example, uh, coconut oil is solid at room temperature, but you know, if you heat it, obviously they'll break down um, and they'll become more liquid. Whereas monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. So they're fluid, right? They're the fluid ones. So your best sources of monounsaturated fats, oleic acid, which uh, is always co combined with vitamin E. All your foods with oleic acid are also very good sources of vitamin E, which helps protect against oxidative stress. So olives, extra virgin olive oil, avocados, avocado oil, macadamia nuts, and macadamia oil, grass-fed butter and meats, um, also some nuts like almonds, peanuts, but I'm not big fans of doing a lot of nuts and getting a lot of oils from those like oil, peanut oil and stuff like that, because they also have a lot of omega-6 inflammatory omega-6 fats. Whereas macadamia nuts are really primarily just monounsaturated fats, same with avocados and uh, extra virgin olive oil as well. And then anytime we're consuming grass-fed butter, that's got monounsaturated fats as well as the, the saturated fats, the omega-3s in there and the meats, right? And grass-fed meats as well. So in general, again, we want to cut down on omega-6 fats. 
we're supposed to have like a, a, a two to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, maybe up to a four to one ratio. So we're going to consume more omega-6 than omega-3. But our typical, the typical American individual out there is consuming a diet that's roughly 20 to one. And that's because they're consuming a lot of uh, a lot of grains, a lot of processed vegetable and seed oils that are very high in omega sixes, and they're consuming grain fed animal products that where the animals were eating corn and soy, and that was very high in omega sixes. And so their meat and dairy products are like twenty to one ra ratio of omega six to omega three, and that's creating a major fatty acid imbalance that drives up inflammation in the body. So very problematic there. Um, also, you know, again, avocados, amazing food. Avocados have a lot of great nutrients in them. So they have got, for example, biotin, which helps protect ourselves from damage. They have vitamin A and E, which helps uh, the skin and nail tissues rebuild and keeps our hair shiny and, and lustrous. They also have a type of sugar called d manoheptalose sugar, which is very low glycemic, doesn't really impact our blood sugar, but actually acts to improve collagen formation. They're also rich in a lot of minerals like phosphorus, magnesium, and manganese to help maintain bone health and reduce our risk of developing osteoporosis. Very rich in vitamin A, which helps protect the epithelial cell lining in the GI tract, as well as again, good for you know vision, things like that. Now they're, they're a form of retinol, I'm sorry, not retinol, but uh, beta carotene, as well as lutein and zeaxanthin, which are other carotenoid antioxidants that are very good for the GI tract. They don't, they don't have the same benefits as retinol, but they actually help to, they, they work in conjunction with retinol, particularly lutein and zeaxanthin, very, very good for helping reduce our risk of cataracts, macular degeneration, um, neurodegeneration in general. Avocados are also rich in beta Cytosterol, which is a, a, a plant sterol, which helps with balancing lipid uh, levels, triglycerides, LDL, HDL, helps regulate blood pressure, protects against heart disease. So a lot of good benefits there. I also love olive oil, right? So avocados are great food to consume regularly. Extra virgin olive oil may be one of the most, one of the healthiest things on the planet. It's loaded with oleic acid, there's a healthy monounsaturated fat that helps improve fat burning, blood sugar stability, and insulin sensitivity. It's rich in oleocanthals, which is the powerful uh, inflammation reducing polyphenol that helps reduce pain in the body, right? It's actually been shown to outperform things like ibuprofen in studies. And it gives the olive oil that kind of bitter peppery flavor. It has um, hydroxytyrosol, which is a polyphenol antioxidant that protects the blood brain barrier and has antimicrobial and immune supportive benefits. It has, again, phytosterols, which are plant cholesterol compounds that improve insulin sensitivity, fat burning, lipid levels, and inflammation. It's also very rich in vitamin E, right? Which really helps the skin, the epithelial lining of the blood vessels helps protect against damage to those blood vessels. So getting high quality extra virgin olive oil in your diet regularly is powerful. And it's even been studied. I used to recommend against cooking with extra virgin olive oil, but if you get a really good, high quality, high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil, it actually is one of the best things to cook with from the perspective that you, it helps to get rid, it helps to lower polar compounds and trans fats. Polar compounds are oxidative elements that are produced when fats go rancid. Okay. So coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil are able to withstand heat. Also butter, tallow, those are good fats to cook with because the more saturated fats, the more heat resilient and the more polyphenols in the fat, like for example, what we have in extra virgin olive oil, the more resilient it is to the heat, the greater the oxidative stability. So you never want to cook with, you know, obviously any of the bad fats, you know, a lot of people for years were talking about cooking with grape seed oil and also avocado oil because they had higher smoke points. But we realized today that smoke points are not a good measurement of whether we should cook with an oil or not. A better measurement is the oxidative stability. And unfortunately, grapeseed oil has a very low amount of antioxidants and polyphenols, and therefore has a very low oxidative stability. So you actually get a lot of rancid fats, a lot of these polar compounds and trans fats when you cook things in grapeseed oil. Also, Avocado oil, although better than grapeseed oil, 
also does not have as much of the polyphenols and therefore uh, does not hold up to high heat as well as extra virgin olive oil. So when I'm looking at fats to cook with, my primarily I like to cook with grass-fed beef tallow, grass-fed butter, and coconut oil. I actually kind of prefer cooking with those. I consume olive oil, extra virgin olive oil every single day, at least a tablespoon every day, but mostly in the raw because I want to maximize because the kind of extra virgin olive oil that really uh, moves the needle for you, that's really, really healthy and has is loaded with, with oleocanthals and these powerful polyphenols is going to be, is going to be pricey. And so due to a price, um, you know, it's not the $7 bottle, $10 bottle you find at the grocery store. It's going to be, you know, $40 a bottle, uh, you know, for like 16.9 ounces. And so I don't want to cook with that. So I'd rather cook with grass fed butter, you know, that I buy for, you know, $4 for, you know, what, two, two sticks, right. Um, or something like that. And so that's what I'm going to cook with. And I, I love the taste of the grass fed butter, but I like using the extra virgin olive oil on top of meat and on salads and different things, things like that. So I get these polyphenols, but I like to cook with the grass fed butter, but you'd certainly can cook with extra virgin olive oil. Um, other than coconut oil, it is the best plant oil to cook with. And going back to some of the benefits, oleocanthals are some of the most powerful compounds out there when it comes to protecting against inflammation, protecting your brain, balancing your immune system and having anti-cancer effects. So oleocanthals, and you're going to get them in a, the kind of olive oil that is fresh pressed. And you want to make sure that it is uh, from artesian farms. And, you know, if it's been sitting for like more than a year, particularly more than six months, you want to get it as fresh as possible. It's going to lose its oleocanthal forms. You want it in a dark glass bottle because uh, UV light will reduce the amount of oleocanthals. This is why I love using fresh pressed olive oil. These are from farms that are pressing the olives early in the harvest when the olives are green. See, green olives are higher in polyphenols. When they ripen, they turn black. Black olives are higher in oleic acids, so they're higher in fat, but lower in polyphenols. So a lot of times, a lot of the olive oil pressers are pressing the black olives because they get more fat out of them. So you know they can, they can make more olive oil for less money. However, they have much less polyphenols in them. So they don't have anywhere near the level of polyphenol. So you want to get it from early in the harvest and as fresh as possible. That's why I like this company, Fresh Pressed Olive Oil. This is the olive oil that I am using on a daily basis. So powerful. And if I'll have a link in the show notes here, guys. So just check that out where you can get a free $39 bottle, right? So you can Try this out for 39, you know, it's normally $39. You can get a free bottle to see if you like it. And you will notice the oleocanthals, right? It's kind of this bittery flavor uh, that you should taste when you're having a good olive oil to, to know that you're getting the polyphenols in there. So try that out. Take advantage of that special offer there. Um, all you do is pay $1 shipping. There's no commitment to buy anything now or ever. So you can try it out, just see if you like it. And if you do, obviously they've got like a membership where you get the freshest olive oil. Like I get three bottles uh, every quarter. Now I, I actually have to buy extra. <laughs> so like on a normal membership, it's three. I actually get more because we use so much of it as a family of six um, who's very health conscious and wants to get these oleocanthals in our bodies. So we're usually using two bottles per month uh, of this, uh, but that will send you something like a bottle every, uh, or three bottles for a quarter, right? That are fresh pressed. So they go all around the the country, I'm sorry, all around the world, because like in the Southern hemisphere, um, you know, certain times of the year, the, there is, the harvest is rich in the Northern hemisphere. Um, and then, and, you know, so they'll get it from Spain, uh, you know, they'll get it from Chile, you know, I think during the summer, like, so, you know, they're getting it at different times of the year uh, where the olives are, you know, right in the beginning of that harvest. So they're getting the polyphenol rich um, olive oil. So, Every quarter you get the freshest press. So check that out. Um, and then I also love, you know, caprylic acid. So adding in some concentrated C8, right? Now you get this in coconut oil. Coconut oil is roughly about 8% caprylic acid. 
But if you want to get concentrated caprylic acid, it can be really powerful for stimulating ketones. This turns immediately into ketones, which gives you energy, mental clarity, helps reduce inflammation in the brain, gives you more satiety and fat burning. So a lot of great benefits to caprylic acid. Um, we know that ketones, again, turn off inflammation in the brain and are a great energy source for the body. And they also turn on mitochondrial uncoupling and mitochondrial biogenesis, where the mitochondria um, become more thrifty and they actually, uh, you know, they increase the amount of mitochondria in the cell. And the more mitochondria in the cell, the healthier it is and the more energy efficient it becomes. So really powerful. So what I like to use is our keto brain oil. And I'll just put like a tablespoon of this in a smoothie every day, pretty much. And that's usually how I get it. Now you can do it. And I, I've dosed people with this where they do like a, they start out with like a half a teaspoon with each meal to help reduce cravings, to help create more satiety. So they can go longer without food. Um, and we'll, we'll gradually increase them to a teaspoon and then maybe up to a tablespoon with, with each meal. You got to watch out for, you know, if you take too much too quickly before your body adapts to it, you can end up with loose stools. So I always start with a half a teaspoon and gradually build up. Most people can get up to doing like, you know, a, at least a teaspoon, if not a tablespoon with a meal and they feel amazing, right? They feel highly energized, satiated, uh, you know, between meals and again, it's really good for mental performance, cognitive function. Um, so really good for that. So I love the keto brain in there. And um, those are the, are the healthy fats, right? Those are the things that you want to be consuming. So, you know, as a replay of this grass fed beef tallow, I love that grass fed butter or ghee. Ghee is, is, is basically uh, they just kind of process the butter a little bit to remove any remaining casein or lactose that could be in it, you know, there's very small amounts um, and it makes it a little bit less allergenic, right? And so that's kind of the, the ghee. So for a lot of people with autoimmune conditions, they may not do great with the butter, but they usually can do well with ghee. So ghee is great from that perspective. And uh, I also love coconut oil and coconut products. I love avocados, avocado oil, um, but I don't usually use much avocado oil. I usually just eat the avocados. And then I really focus on olives and extra virgin olive oil. Green olives, you can get green or black. Green olives are going to have more polyphenols. Black olives are going to have more oleic acid, more of the healthy fat. And I use extra virgin olive oil. I try to get about two tablespoons a day into my diet, for sure one tablespoon. Um, and that's so powerful. And I try to get the freshest pressed extra virgin olive oil. And then- on top of that, I also like keto brain, C8 MCT oil, because it triggers ketosis, really turns up ketones, great for satiation. Um, so I'll put that in a smoothie as well. So hopefully this is a good training for you guys. You enjoyed this and we'll see you guys on a future online training. Everybody be blessed.